Good morning, Richard Edelman. Hey, Loic, how are you doing? It's great to be in Davos again. Great to see you again. So what's your agenda this year in, in Davos? I guess trust is very important again. Well, what's interesting in uh, the Edelman Trust Barometer this year is the rise of business and the decline in trust in government. And what my message is to the CEOs, take advantage of this opportunity um, and recognize that you can lead again. You don't have to worry about the problems of five or six years ago of Enron and uh, Global Crossing. You're past that. Um, there's high trust um, in business because you're doing things that matter, um, for example, in environment. Um, you're not being ordered by government to do it. It's in your incentive. Green can be green, meaning you can make money that way. Um, and that's just one instance of, of an example. So, but that's a very big, uh, I mean, very important statement. So we, we don't, do we really need the governments if we don't trust them anymore? Look, governments establish the basic rules of the playing field. But governments, I think, are do best when they stay out of the way about choosing industries that are going to win and whatnot. That's up to business. Um, and I think that the more you know, freedom for trade and um, innovation, um, IP protection, that's a good place for government, IP protection. But, you know, let the business decide what's going to actually work. So how about this, uh, do, do you have any more uh, like uh, insights on this trust survey you've been doing for eight years? Like, uh, are there any sectors where uh, businesses are more trusted? Well, what's fascinating is technology is the number one sector trusted across all industries, across all countries. Um, but it's, there are tremendous variations um, by country. For example, in China, energy and autos are very trusted. In Europe, they're not so trusted. Insurance companies, higher trusted and less developed, distrusted in, uh, in Europe. Um, so it's, um, it really depends on the country. It's also important to note that the type of media um, depends on the market. So in France, very important, newspapers. In China, television. In many markets, U.S., Britain, it's business magazines. Also, stock analyst reports are the second um, most important uh, trusted source. So what conclusions do you take to your customers from this survey? How do you adapt their uh, communication? What do you advise them? How PR is changing and, and generally like marketing and how, how do you change them? Well, I think another key finding in this report is the most trusted spokesperson is a person like yourself. And that means that uh, it's not based on your neighbor or um, somebody who's the same race or sex or whatever. It's actually people who share an interest with you. So that means that your horizontal conversation, the um, horizontal axis, the peer-to-peer, -peer matters tremendously. Companies have to participate in this. They can't just leave that to impassioned consumers who are just using their own experience. You have to listen to them, but also contribute uh, to the content. Um, so, traditionally, companies are comfortable with top-down, controlled messages and one way. Now they have to add this additional dimension of the horizontal conversation. Is there a, a few campaigns or a few uh, um, examples you can share with us in 06 which, we, which were uh, um, illustrating this? I think a very good one that's really global is the Dove campaign for Real Beauty, which was all about female self-image, and um, it had to do uh, with a substantive problem, which is that 98% of women don't think that they're beautiful. Um, and um, the issue for Dove was how to harness this really positive issue and turn it into something that could be symbolic uh, about uh, women accepting themselves. And so they accepted models, real women, um, who were heavy or tall or skinny or, you know... Just normal women. Just normal people and told their stories and let them talk to each other. And so you pick six or seven models. In France, I know, for instance, they picked a, an older woman um, and they tell their stories and then women talk to each other uh, on the uh, Dove website. So it's really... So no top models, uh, we don't cross in the streets so often anymore. No, Claudia Schiffer is going to have to find elsewhere uh, big jobs, but um, not for the Dove campaign anyway. Yeah, well, I can, I can see it here, actually. Self-esteem checkup, wow. So, and, and what are the results from this campaign? Well, the sales of Dove went up 10% last year. And, uh, you know, advertising is important as a reflector of the reality that is in the PR and, and, and uh, Internet uh, part of the campaign. At the advertising was billboards. Um, it wasn't TV. So, so it looks like, yeah, yeah, we, we got used to a world where uh, advertising was uh, showing the reality in a very special manner, which was fake, right? So, so you're suggesting every advertiser should go back to a, a normal life, 
you know, advertising where they show people like they really are and not models anymore and not put, you know, like a dream life which does not exist? Look, I'm not an ad guy, but what I can tell you is that I think the more you reflect a true situation, the more credibility you have. And in a world lacking trust in institutions, again, you're trying to find common ground. And this is a good example, this Dove campaign, of how to do that. So you, of course, uh, still have uh, globalization on your agenda with your customers, I guess. And then Edelman is a global company. How do you see the difference between uh, the gap between the countries in the flat world? Is, is it flattening, or, or how do you see it? Well, I was in India in Christmas with my family. We had a marvelous time. And what you see in, in a place like India is real aspiration to be what the West has in terms of um, affluence and um, media um, and I think you know you have a sliver of society in that case um, really quite going for it the question is can they have the infrastructure and the education to give the ability to the others to really participate in a great way my most compelling story like was um, my uh, family went out to a um, rural village in Telonia and we went to a night school where the little girls um, who are tending cows during the day, they're tending cows, um, they come in at night and they are on a solar lantern and they're doing mathematics problems um, in, in, in the nighttime trying to learn math. And so my 11-year-old daughter came with and they grabbed her and they said, please sit with us and tell us what you did today. Did you herd cattle? And she said, no, I didn't do that. I saw some of the sites in India. And they said, well, you know, tell us about your life in New York, and they were so hungry for um, information about um, what they only maybe have heard about in a remote way. So we've got to get these people in the game. How about is uh, Europe and uh, and maybe the U.S. You know, with this uh, world flattening, how, how do you think? You know, because we are losing jobs right every day. So how how do you think we're reacting? Are we in a very bad shape, especially Europe, or or not? Well, look, I, I think both Europe and the United States face. Um, a question, are we going to um, try to allow free trade and compete on the basis of better educated, more networked, um, kind of higher end industries, thought industries, um, or are we going to try to retain what we have in a static fashion? And but it's not right anymore, right, Richard? I mean, in India, they have, you know, amazing high end as, as well skills right now. It's true, but look, I, I heard Larry Summers talk last night Right. who's been Harvard, and, and he said, you know, one thing that we have uniquely in both Europe and the United States is the network. You know, you have people who can all work together very smoothly, and it's, it's not simply, you know, IT and services. You've got to think about um, brain and what um, kind of new creative industries we can make. Public relations being a good example of one of those. And so let's talk uh, to finish with and, and, and let you go back to your agenda. The, uh, Future or technology? You you have your avatar in Second Life, right, Richard? Yeah, I do. Actually, is it is it how is it compared to the real life, uh, uh, Richard Edelman? I know. Well, I think it's slightly more handsome, but that's okay. It's <laughs> okay. I'll take the uh, you know benefit for the day. Um, but look, I, I think that um, technology is no longer just a line extension of of people's lives. Technology is central to who we are, what we're doing. Um, I think it's interesting not to let technology take your life over. Um, and, and, but it's, it's important to say, okay, how can, we, how can we flatten the organization? How can we get ideas from the bottom up um, so that we continue to advance faster? Do you think Second Life is a gadget or, or is it something that will become as important as the web? I think fa Second Life is not a gadget. I think Second Life is, is a real place for companies, as an example, to uh, show off um, what they're going to be doing. And um, like our social media press release, we're now introducing in Second Life, and it's good. People have to see it. Great. Thank you very much, Richard. You, you're still great in, in real life, too. Thanks, Luke. I'll try. <laughs> Can't leave it to my avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.